Pac-12 conference play is getting back into the swing of things as the Arizona State Sun Devils get ready to take on that team down south this Saturday. Let's check it out and preview it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. As always, thank you guys so much for checking us out. Remember, wherever you're getting your podcast, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, so you can check us out in a visual platform if that is your preference. Wherever you're getting your podcast, though, hit like and subscribe. Turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content, and stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36. You can find the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Levels. Let's hop into today's conversation, taking a look at the Arizona State Sun Devils basketball team playing its first game since last Wednesday against the U of A Wildcats, the in-state hated rivals. I normally don't do basketball previews. However, I can't help but want to preview this game. This is a massive opportunity for Arizona State to really set the tone, send a message, bless you to my dog, about the direction that this basketball team is trying to head towards this is a really 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 good opportunity to finally make some headway and prove that you're not just a flash in a pan and that you are a team that needs to be respected you have some quality wins on your schedule right you beat number 20 michigan you beat a previously ranked creighton who unfortunately had just stopped being ranked the game that you played them you beat vcu you have quality wins on your schedule here. And then for what it's worth, you are 2-0 and in the conference of champions. Had that, had that in there, obviously. But you haven't played a team like U of A yet. And when you're Arizona State, you really aren't going to play a team like U of A more than two times a year. Those games being U of A. This is a team that is stacked all the chips in its corner to try and win a national championship. They're currently the number five team in the nation. They have a really, really good program. Not surprising as much as I hate to say that. It's just the truth. And right now, uh, Tommy Lloyd in his second season with the team, previously an assistant coach with Gonzaga for 20 years, has really got these guys going in the right direction. And all, all signs point to a deep run in the NCAA tournament when it rolls around in March. Before we get that far, though, we got to talk about these Wildcats. And this is a very diverse group. I mean, they they seriously have kids from all over the world on this team. There's kids from Lithuania. There's kids from France, Estonia, the United States, Serbia. Like, seriously, it is a very diverse group compared to Arizona State, which has a Canadian and a bunch of kids from the U.S., Like U of A has really done their work and it helps that they've also hit up the transfer portal as well to bring in some key contributors for the team. And they've got a bunch of kids that are, you know, sophomores, juniors, and are getting ready to maybe make this their final run before they either run out of eligibility or decide to move on to the pros. I'm sure that there are, futures at stake here for these teams but they've got some guys that are from different programs that have come in to contribute they've got guys that are homegrown and they have developed into superstars of their own but it starts with the big men for the team they've got two guys in particular that are just a massive human beings and b really really good basketball players they got azulas uh two uh two to bailas two tubeless I, you know what? I watched a video on this, and I already forgot how to say this. But I do know his first name is Azulas. I think it's Tubeless. I don't know. 
I'm really, really sorry. I even studied this before we started. And Omar Balo and those two guys playing forward and center, respectively, are massive human beings. Azulis at six foot 11, 245 pounds, and Balo at seven foot 260 pounds. They're not just tall, they're built, and they're going to be incredibly difficult to guard. In fact, nobody has had a solution for how to guard these guys this year as they lead the Wildcats in scoring, respectively. Azulis with 20.1 and Balo with 17.8. This is a team that's averaging 90 points a game, by the way. Those two are combining for a little less than half of that output with 37.9 points. Like, that is that is insane production from two players. And with them being as big and strong and physical as they are, and great shooters, too. Uh, Azulas, especially, is very, very special. Shooting 42.9% from deep. He's 80.4% on the line, and he's, regardless on the court, a 61.4% shooter. It doesn't get much better than that. Stopping him is going to be next to impossible. Same with Balo, who is has not shot a three-point this year, but you typically don't want your center doing that. But that's okay because he's only shooting 74.2% from the field. So the only bright side is if you put up, you put him on the line, you feel good. He's only 57% shooter. But the fact that pretty much anywhere else, he can lay it up, he can dunk it, he can shoot it. I don't care. Like Balo is just one of those guys where you want to get him the ball and have him have that opportunity to put points up on the board early and often for the Wildcats. Their offense is going to run through these guys, but equally at the same time, they're going to be looking for these guys to be playing their defense. They're together averaging almost 18 rebounds a game at 8.7 for Azulas and 9.1 for Balo. They're big physical monstrosities. And seriously, like I, so funny enough, I refuse to look up like U of A highlights on my Google Chrome. So I was on my iPhone and went to Safari because I never use Safari and looked up the highlights that way. That this way, nobody can go to my YouTube and be like, dude, why are you looking up Wildcat highlights? Like that's how, that's how petty I am, but neither here nor there, but looking it up because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. These guys are fun to watch and it's not going to be fun to watch as an Arizona state fan because those two by themselves are going to be a handful but not to mention the rest of the roster is very good as well. Courtney Ramey averaging 11.7, Kerr Creesa averaging 11.4, and Pele Larson rounding out their starting five, averaging 10.8. It's really about those guys. Cedric Henderson Jr. is also getting 21 minutes a game as their sixth man off the bench. And then from there, it's just kind of getting some guys involved when they can. But it's really those six guys that you have to worry about. And it's especially the two big men that are going to be the biggest problem for Arizona State. I truly don't think that there is a solution for these guys. It's just going to have to be one of those you need to play absolutely out of your mind if you want any kind of shot against a team that's as big, talented, physical, and strong as they are. You're hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. As the evening comes to an end, people start to head out. You think about calling for a ride. No, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. Besides, what are the odds will get pulled over anyway? Even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everybody knows about the risks of drunk driving. The results are often tragic and deadly. However, that doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. You guys know this by now. Check out the Lock On Sports Today podcast next. The biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes or less. Instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you're getting your podcasts. Thinking about Arizona State compared to these behemoths that, that U of A employs, Arizona State plays a lot more small ball 
compared to these guys. Arizona State typically running with uh, a bunch of guards and then what's his name? I'm totally blanking. Um, Warren Washington on the court at the same time, but they definitely play a lot more small ball compared to U of A playing their big physical game. Uh, DJ Horn, 6'1", 175. Desmond Cambridge, 6'4", 180. Frankie Collins, 6'1", 185. Devin Cambridge, 6'6", 215. None of those guys are going to be able to match up with Azulas and with Balo. That is a massive disadvantage that the Sun Devils are already in, which is going to put an emphasis on a guy like Warren Washington, who is the team's biggest player at 7'225", to be that big physical presence. And even then, he is still going to be out-muscled compared to these guys. He's just not as big. Arizona State is already at a massive disadvantage when it comes to this. So stopping those guys, completely out of the equation. Limiting everyone else, that's probably where it needs to start. Now, for U of A, like I said, a lot of their production comes from those top two guys, Azulis and Balo. 38 points, almost 39 points come between those guys. From there, it's distributed. Courtney Ramey is their next highest scorer on the team. Uh, he is first year with the team, previously spent four years with Texas. He's a grad transfer for the team, but productive and efficient during his time in college basketball, averaging 10.1 points a game. He is one of their main distributors of the ball on the court. Finding a way to limit him get inside his head going to be difficult, but that's probably where it needs to start for Arizona state. Again, this just isn't a team that you can out physical. So instead what you're going to have to do is play assignment basketball, understand where you need to be, when you need to be there, not be afraid to be a little physical. If you have to, like I said, some of these guys, maybe you do want to put them on the line. Like, Oh, like a uh, Omar Balo, only a 57% shooter from the free throw line. Maybe you want to put him on the line a bit. Courtney Ramey, 53.3% shooter from the line. He might also be a guy I want to put on there more than more than occasionally, especially because Ramey is a 45% shooter from deep, which leads U of A. Well, it, it leads them for their main contributors, I should say. So you got to, th you got to think about the opportunities that you're allowing when these guys get in the paint, you just need to figure out a way to limit exposure trying to take away the deep the deep uh deep shooting game is going to be probably the team's biggest priority this is not going to be easy at all especially because they're just great shooting from deep azulas like i mentioned is almost a 43 percent shooter courtney ramey leading them with 45 percent kirk creesa shooting 40.8 percent these are guys and uh cedric henderson jr from the bench is shooting 40.6 percent they can make something happen from anywhere on the court Arizona State is running into a little bit of an issue based off of the last game against San Francisco against the deep shooting. If they get into that hole, it's going to be big nasty. You got to find a way to limit Courtney Ramey and what he's able to do as a distributor. You got to find a way to match physicality and maybe present yourself more fouling opportunities. Like Worst comes to worst, you get called a scrappy, dirty team by the Wildcats, and you put Balo on the line 20 times. That sounds a lot better than having Balo go off for 30 points just as a pure shooter instead of a free throw shooter. These are guys that can be incredibly dangerous if you let them play the way they want to play. So that's got to be the strategy for Arizona State is kind of playing with an edge, playing with a little bit of tenacity and getting U of A off the rhythm. It's really the only way you're going to be able to do it from a defensive standpoint. Offensively, you got to just shoot the ball and make the ball. It's about as simple as that. And the reason why I'm so broad about that is because U of A is averaging 90 points a game. They're one of the highest scoring teams in the NCAA right now. They're absolutely bonkers. They get points all across their bench. They have big time contributions from their guys who are capable of going off individually whenever they are not going to have a problem scoring. Arizona state just surrendered 97 points to San Francisco. That this defense is good. It is not great. And it is certainly 
not going to be, or not going to be, hasn't been tested against a team that's built like U of A. So bad news. U of A is going to score points. That means you're going to have to score points. If you can hold U of A under their average of 90.2, you'll have a chance as long as your offense can find a way to score some points. Because ASU hasn't been a terrific scoring team on the year. As a team, they're averaging 72.7 points a game. That's not hateful. It's just, it's average, probably. If you took a look at the grand scope of all of college basketball, they're middle of the pack in a best case scenario. U of A is not. So you're going to have to find a way to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and put up more points than you're normally used to putting up. If you can find a way to do that, you're going to be able to find yourself in this game a little more than maybe you previously would have thought, but it's going to be difficult. As, as always, thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Make Lock On Sports today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports today, available on YouTube and wherever you're getting your podcasts. Final thoughts. This is David versus Goliath. This is this is absolutely a case of U of A is a basketball juggernaut and ASU is feeling good about themselves. It's been a few years since ASU was able to take down U of A. It's not impossible. This is a home game for ASU as well. Be there. Go to this game. We need Sun Devils in the stands. We need every bit of a home court advantage that we possibly can have in order to have a chance against U of A. It's not just going to be about the players and the coaches. We need a home court environment. Show up in maroon or gold, whatever the team is sporting. I don't know off the top of my head what they want us to wear. Wear those colors. Be in the stands. Be loud. Be crazy. Have fun. Second half rolls around. Curtain of distraction comes out. That's when we need to get loud. And I mean loud. I don't want to be able to hear myself. I am going to find my way to that game one way or another. As a fan, I will be in the stands. So if you guys are there, let me know so I can hit you up, say hey, all that good stuff. But we need people at this game. This is the most important game of the season in more ways than one for Arizona State. It's the toughest game that you've had to play. It might be the toughest game you play all year. It's a home game. It's starting up Pac-12 play for the remainder of the season. It's a tone-setting game. You're 11-2 and two right now. There's no shame in being 11-3 and three if you're able to make it a close game. But can you imagine starting off the year 12 and two with two wins over ranked opponents and one of them being the number five team in the nation, which just so happens to be that team down south? There's a lot on the line in this game. There truly is. And there's a big opportunity here for Arizona State in more ways than one. This could also impact recruiting and moving forward. This is a big, big deal. As for the Sun Devils, there are more than one way to win this game. And I'm not just talking about a W in the box score. There's there's ways that you're going to be getting, what are they called? I can't think of what they're called. It That's going to bug the heck out of me. I'm so sorry for drawing a blank. But there's there's going to be wins not in the win column that help you out. That is bugging me so much that I can't remember what those are called. Man, I don't even know what to like Google to try and help myself remember. If you're able to keep it close, that's a win. If you're able to put up one of the highest scoring outputs that you've had this year, I doubt that you're going to be able to top the 91 points you put up against San Diego, but maybe you do. That's a win. If you hold U of A under that 90.2 points, if you hold them under 80 points, 
that's a win. If you are able to make this a game at any point in time, that's a win. So this is a game that's still so early in the Sun Devil schedule that there's plenty of time to turn it around. Even if you get your you-know-what's handed to you, there's a chance that you can turn this into a win for yourself. But if you are able to get an actual win in the column and go to uh, 13-2 and to start the year, 3-0 and in the conference, a win over number five Arizona, that would be remarkable. It's not impossible. But what you need to realize is that these big physical presences are going to get their points, they're going to get their boards, and they're going to be on the line. Hopefully, you take advantage when you're able to put them on the line. Hopefully, you take advantage when they do make those mistakes and they do turn the ball over. Because U of A does turn the ball over almost 15 times a game. There's opportunities there. You just need to make sure that you're the team that's able to capitalize on that. For what it's worth, ASU is averaging two less turnovers a game. And I feel like ASU turns the ball over a lot. So there's opportunities for Arizona State to win this game. You just got to capitalize on them. The team that makes the fewer mistakes is probably going to win this game. Who would have thought? You need complete effort from the whole team. Thankfully for Arizona State, they go pretty deep on their roster. And that's where you're going to need more than just Warren Washington to play well. I don't know if this maybe is Marcus Bagley's first game back. That would be awesome if it was. What a hero story that would be. But regardless of him, I'm looking at youngsters like Duke Brennan. I'm looking at youngsters like Jemiah Neal. Some big forward presences who can play some defense. I'm going to be looking at them, especially with what I got to go up against. Austin Nunez, can you provide some high score shooting for me? What about a uh, senior forward, Alonzo Gaffney? Are you able to bring your A game in this game? For Arizona State, it's going to go beyond the starting five. It's going to go down to how many guys are able to step up in this game. It's not going to be a five-man or a six-man effort. It's going to be an eight to 10 to 12-man effort to win this game against Goliath. It's David versus Goliath. Will the good guys win this game? I don't really know. I'm not picking them, but I'm certainly going to be rooting as hard as I possibly can for them because this is my school. And until the day I die, forks up, fall down, Arizona. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Remember, this podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you want to check us out in a visual platform, wherever you're getting your podcast, though, Hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36. Find the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Levels. I will see you guys in Tempe. I will see you Saturday afternoon as well to recap the game for one final podcast before the end of the year 2022. Until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun.